What's up everybody and welcome back to GeForce Garage. My name is Dwight and today we're going to be building an entry level gaming PC centered around the GTX 1050. All right, so we have all of our parts, and since we're centering this entry-level PC around the GTX 1050, we need a case that can fit it and not blow our budget. So we went with the Antec VSK3000E-U3. The case is pretty good because within this price point, it does offer USB 3.0 on the front of the case, which not a lot of cases do around this price point. Coupled with that is the ASUS B150M-A, which is, um, Actually, a very surprising motherboard for a micro ATX. Not only does it give us a PCI 3.0, it does have an M.2. It has four slots for RAM, which support up to 64 gigs. You can also run the Skylake uh, series of CPUs on it. And speaking of Skylake, we have an i3-6100, which is a 3.7 gigahertz dual core, which is honestly a pretty beefy um, clock speed to be boasting on an i3. To power all of it, we have an EVGA 500 watt, which is more than what we need because the video card I think is a 75 watt and the CPU is somewhere around 51 watts. We also have 16 gigs of RIP JAWS uh, for our memory. And we also have a one terabyte 7200 RPM SATA 3 hard drive from HDST. So uh, we'll have plenty of space for all of our games. All right, so that covers all the parts. So let's start building this thing. All right, so we're done building our PC. We had a couple of hiccups, but uh, nothing that wasn't resolved in a couple of minutes. Uh, the first of which being the manual for this motherboard leaves out some information to the point where I actually had to scan a QR code in the manual to download a digital manual to figure out the front pin connections, which is, you can get away with it. It is written on the motherboard, but personally, I like actually seeing the pins. The other thing that we lucked out on, we have a two and a half inch mounting bay for our hard drive. So you don't need to use an adapter, but there's only one. So you can't uh, run more than one SSD or a small form factor uh, spindle drive. We got plenty of room for our graphics card. We did opt for the stock cooler on the CPU. We could go with a Hyper 212 Evo for about 30 bucks, which is what I usually recommend to people that are going to air cool. But um, those ones are pretty big. And uh, with a case like this, a smaller one, it's gonna stick out. So you won't be able to run a side panel if you get that heatsink. Cable management, obviously there's not a whole lot of space behind it, but uh, we did make it work. She's not pretty, but she'll get the job done. And speaking of the job getting done, let's check out the numbers. I started with the baseline 3D mark and used a recommended test time spy, which is a DirectX 12 benchmark for gaming PCs. After its slideshow, we came out to a score of 1,977, which is an okay score for the hardware that we have. After that, I checked out some of the big hitters like Battlefield 1 and Witcher 3. Battlefield ran great, running the DX11 on medium settings, averaging about 60 frames a second. Witcher 3 being a heavier game, still pulled on average 50 frames a second in high density areas sometimes peaking at 60 frames a second again on medium settings. Overwatch did great on high settings, averaging 100 frames a second with a high end of 120 and a low of about 90. Counter-Strike, League of Legends, and World of Warcraft also did good on high settings. I didn't know how to stress test Counter-Strike well, so I threw a bunch of smokes and on average it stayed around 120 frames a second or higher, but with a bunch of smokes it did dip down into the 90s. World of Warcraft has a lot of entities and effects, especially in the big cities, so it pulled about 50 in towns and about 80 plus flying around the wilderness. And lastly, I checked out League of Legends. I have no idea how to play this game, but from the little bit that I did play, it absolutely killed it at at least 180 frames a second or higher. All right guys, that about wraps it up. The last thing though that we need to do is give it a GeForce Garage badge because it's not an official build from GeForce Garage without one. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more, leave a comment down below what you thought about it, and we'll see you for the next one.